I am still making so much currency with this strat to the point where I could use an extra pair of hands just to hold all these golden balls. But first things first, welcome back everybody. The name is Wolf, and you are eccentric exiles that are still looking to make fun currency strategy a possibility in this T-17 nightmare of ours. Having that said though, you're looking right now at a continuation of my exile strategy. I have been doing some Val Temple in the meantime as well, trying to cultivate that. Still working on it, as I'm trying to find a specific hybrid kind of tech, but I can't quite get it the way I want it to be. But what we do have here is a final version of the exile strat that I very much appreciate and like, and also in the gameplay right now in the background you'll be able to tell. Uh, that we are hitting quite a bit of currency, as well as, for some reason, a double divine that wasn't duplicated. I did not realize that was a possibility, but apparently it is. Uh, it doesn't happen very frequently, but yeah, you can drop more than one divine from a tile set farm, apparently. So that's an interesting little uh, tidbit. But yes, if you're just here to skip to the time code, you can always do that in the description box below. But while you're down there, make sure to uh, hit that like button. I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. But yeah, I, I still think this is very much my most fun strategy, but things have changed. I have fine-tuned the Atlas tree a little bit as a result of me getting a little upset with Blight. Blight is still very cost-effective point-wise and very, very much profit. It's just a little time-consuming to the point where every single time I did my map, may it be, you know, on Glacier or City Square because they're both absolutely wonderful maps. I think City Square might actually be slightly better if I'm being truthful, but that's ultimately down to personal preference as well and uh, the economic meta but yes the uh, the blight was always ooh, there it is the two divines i was talking about not duplicated either they're just anyway i digress but yes the um the blight was a little too slow so we cut that and now we find ourselves in a slightly optimized a slightly more optimized atlas tree but unfortunately if we want to push it even further we have to make a decision like i feel if you want to farm exiles with more efficiency you probably are going to have to give up the rng loot box elements and then go to tier 17s and then just farm scarabs which is very 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 effective but also kind of bleh i don't think that's incredibly fun and if you want to go the other way you have to go full into ritual run eight map mods or even tier 17s and then go with delirium beyond and really go into the ritual rolling because if you hit that, uh, if you hit big with that and you get all these ritual scarabs, you can really force some like high levels of currency out of that mechanic as well. Because without it, it's a little hit or miss. But you can hit, as you will see right here, because the Nameless King is profit. But uh, yes, let's talk a little bit about the Atlas passive tree then as we move forward, shall we? And this is version 4 of my Atlas passive tree that I've been using to farm Exile and their tile sets on top of Glacier and City Square. So, if you want to know what we have changed, because as you can see, we have changed a couple of things, stick around, otherwise you can pause the video and copy the tree, but also note it is the four points unspent at the bottom. Those are personal preference points, and I will discuss some options for you. But yes, the tree as it is, is probably as optimized as it's going to get without fundamentally shifting the value of the strategy. But yes, having that said, we are going to continue with what we know, which is exiles. We are trying to summon many, many unique creatures and then trying to get those tile sets applied to them and then trying to maximize the value from it. That's the goal, right? So we are summoning lots of exiles. So we are picking up the wheel one, wheel two in the middle, and then at the epicenter, wheel three, which is very, very good. We're also kind of juicing them with torment just for some additional loot, which is very, very nice. But these tormented ghosts are also ghosts that are considered unique monsters. And they are under the effect of the treasure scarab. So that's more loot. So we're picking up Seance, and we are picking up Unrelenting Torment as well. You don't have to pick up per Paranormal Meeting, but it could be one of your personal preferences. It just means that you have one extra ghost <laughs> that might drop a little bit of loot. It's entirely up to you, but it is one of your options. Other than that, we are also picking up Ritual, and there are some confusing elements to Ritual here. Because people think that you have to drag creatures into Ritual. You don't. It doesn't work. Check the wiki. It literally specifies that. It has done so for a very long time. I don't know where this rumor started, but you do not drag people into Ritual. All you have to do is cross your fingers and hope that the exiles, specifically the giant exiles, 
have spawned in the influenced when you opened the map. And if they have, they are part of that ritual and you can resummon them. Because regular rituals, or at least regular exiles, do not spawn new loot if they are resummoned through that ritual, right? Only the giants do, okay? Only giant exiles drop new loot after being resummoned in a ritual. I don't know how many times I have to repeat that, but that is just the way it is. That's why we are using ritual. One of the things I have indeed been contemplating about uh, moving forward with this strategy is like cutting ritual and just keeping the chance of ritual alive so that we can have the copy of the giants, but that we don't have to worry too much about the deferring, which we are still using because ritual has actually gotten a lot of buffs as of late, right? Or at least with this season, with the Mist King invitation, the beasts, and there are still, of course, all the old school natural divines you can get, but also synth items and fractures. There's a lot of value to be had still in rituals. So that's why we're still picking it up because I have made so many divines and hundreds of chaos by just getting lucky with the uh, the invitations alone, not to begin to speak about all the divines I've gotten from the actual ritual devices. That's also why we're picking up occult devotion, so we have the best chance for uh, more tribute, but also, of course, the cloning of the exiles, assuming they're giants. On top of that, we also have our favorite Eldritch Altar of Choice. I like red for this strategy, but if you like blue, you can do so as well. I think red is a little bit more complementary, but it ultimately depends on personal preference and your build. Because if your build is really bad for red, but really good for blue, you're better off going blue. You do have a little bit of extra points for travel, so keep that in mind. On top of that, we're just picking up some extra quantity and such. And we are specifying the, or at least uh, fine-tuning the scarabs that do drop because they are just more valuable. This allows us to get more value on average from scarabs. It's also one of the reasons we block all the useless scarabs down here, because that is a part of the node, as you can read, scarabs found in your maps cannot be, and then whatever extra content you're blocking. So that's also one of the reasons we're doing that, since we're no longer picking up blight spawn, or as you can see, the uh, fungal bloom right here. So we have a bunch of extra points, and I decided to spend those in those scarab nodes for the sake of value. Other than that, though, it's still pretty much the same strat, but we have four more points. Now, I did already point out you could actually go right here if you want the extra ghost, which is also one extra unique. You could also go down here for singular focus. This allows you to cut down on, like, troublesome map clicking. If that's what you want to do, it is considered the lazy note, uh, since we especially don't have extra map support. So I would not recommend that. You could also pick up Chittering Champions if you are running City Square a lot, or almost exclusively, because City Square, of course, has three bosses where Glacier only has a bunch of unique enemies, which are a different classification, so that's very important. On top of that, you could also pick up maybe some map mods, because it does help buff the overall map value just a little bit which does give you a little bit more tribute and give you a little bit better chance for ground loot but it's entirely and ultimately up to you since i use city square and um, i like unique monsters so i have opted for this particular setup but when i feel particularly lazy i do spec into singular focus because i just sometimes cannot be bothered picking up all those maps that I may occasionally encounter. But yes, this is the Atlas tree on version 4. And like I said, this is probably going to be the final version before I have to fundamentally shift the strategy in and of itself, which also probably means we have to go to tier 17 if we really want to make it shine. And honestly, I don't really feel like doing that. So until then, though, we are still farming up a hell of a lot of currency and I hope you guys still have a lot of fun with it as well, because I sure do. And this here is our map device. And although straightforward, it is very mandatory. We are using treasure scarabs to get these tile set rewards on unique creatures. This is very important. You want at least two of them. At least two. On top of that, you want gigantification. I personally like using two because I'm trying to fish for those giant exiles to be part of a ritual so I can resummon them, right? Lock them in if you see them by using the ritual. And then every single ritual afterwards, you will have that rogue giant that will drop loot through the treasure scarab. However, keep in mind, 
regular exiles do not drop loot if they have been resummoned. Only the giants do. Keep that in mind. For that purpose, we want more rogue exiles to give us not only more tile set rewards, but also a greater chance of having more giants, which is also the reason why we're using anarchy on the craft to get more rogue exiles. On top of that, we are, as you can see, using the Searing Exarch, which is very, very lovely, which is our, at, uh, our Eldritch Altar of Choice, but if you want to use either of worlds, pop off. Other than that, when it comes down to the map, you use City Square or Glacier, and it doesn't matter how you roll them, right? You just pick one, you give it some quality if you feel frisky. If you do give it quality, you can also benefit from Chiseled Perfection. If you instead don't want to go for mounting modifiers, when we talked about those four points that are personal preference. Uh, but yes, you just give it some elk. And then theoretically, you could already go. Although I would recommend having at least um, over 80% because of the challenges. But yes, you can just do this if you want to. You could also theoretically run them white, but I wouldn't recommend it because you're just giving up free quantity and, uh, and free loot. And free pack size, which of course will help with the ritual deferring and re-rolling because there's a cost attached to it. So just get whatever you can do. Just make sure you don't brick your map, right? And then when you're ready, you can just go to the map device and pop off. Assuming there's nothing else in it already. But yes, there it is. That's the strat. Thank you so much for watching. This is probably going to be indeed the last iteration of this particular version. Because any other iteration will be a, sim it will be a simplistic overhaul of the actual fundamental understanding of this strat. Like if I'm cutting the entirety of Ritual, it's going to be a whole different beast, right? And that is going to require essentially a whole new type of video. So enjoy it while you still can. I'm still dropping lots of loot with it. Many other people are too. So uh, I'm not sure if it's going to get hot fixed. But um, as they say, thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time. I'm out.